This presentation is a brief primer on bonds, primarily about the relationship between the price of a bond and the yield or the interest rate on that bond. I have found that this concept can be difficult for undergraduates studying economics and finance. A bond is simply a certificate of debt issued by a government or corporation in order to raise money, which we call capital. A corporation basically sells a piece of paper, the bond, and uses the money it raised from that sale to purchase and build things that will help it produce more products in the future. The bondholder has the promise that the corporation will pay him or her a fixed amount in the future. This fixed amount is called the face value. The bondholder knows exactly the number of dollars he will receive when the bond reaches the end of its life, or maturity. Right, so maturity is also written on the bond contract, so the bondholder knows exactly how many months or years until he receives the face value payment from the corporation. Now some bonds also pay a fixed amount annually or semi-annually, and these are called coupon payments. In the old days, the bond had tear-off tabs. You would tear off and mail into the corporation who would mail a payment back to you in return. In doing so, the company was redeeming its coupons. And now it's all done electronically. And most bonds of a year or longer maturity uh, make these coupon payments. For our calculations later, we simply add up the total dollar value of coupon payments paid over the year and just pretend that the company is making one annual payment. And that'll make sense in a minute. Right, the yield on a bond is the return uh, the bondholder receives from his investment. And there are various calculations of yield that we're interested in yield to maturity, or YTM. That is the return on the investment the bondholder receives if they hold the bond until maturity, expressed as a percentage. So for example, let's say Eric wants to open a lemonade stand on campus. He's done his homework and knows how much his cost will be. He knows the price of lemons, of sugar, etc. He's also done some market research to determine how much students are willing to pay for lemonade and has a good idea of how many cups he can sell. He determines that this would be profitable, so he wants to go into business, but he needs money to buy his initial equipment to get started. And so he'll issue a bond to raise that capital. Eric is hoping that his profits will cover the cost of borrowing so that it will be no problem for him to pay the bondholder back when it's time to redeem the bond or pay, or pay face value. So let's suppose the face value of the bond is $1,000 and there will be no coupon payments. And this is what we call a zero coupon bond because there are zero coupons. And Eric will redeem this bond in one year. The zero coupon bonds are typically sold at a discount, meaning the price will be less than the face value of the bond. And we can use the formula shown here to calculate yield to maturity on a zero coupon bond. Future value is the same thing as face value. It's what Eric will pay in the future. And the purchase price goes in the denominator, and the fraction is raised to the 1 over n power, where n is the number of periods. Subtracting 1, as the equation does, simply gives us the percentage earned, which is the yield. So notice that mathematically, with this formula, if the denominator gets larger than the number, in this case the yield, gets smaller. So as the price people are willing to pay for Eric's bond rises, right, the yield on that uh, bond falls. So here we see the bond and the price someone is willing to pay for it. Someone is willing to pay $900 today for the promise of $1,000 from Eric in one year. So we use the formula to calculate uh, the yield on the bond, and it comes out to be 11.1%. And that's the nominal rate of return the investor expects to receive, and the nominal cost of borrowing for Eric. Now let's suppose that uh, no one is willing to pay 900 and the most Eric can get for his bond is $750. In that case, the yield is 33.3%, a much higher return for the investor and a higher cost to Eric. So you'll notice that as the price fell, the yield on the bond rose. Now what happens when the bond makes regular coupon payments? Well, yield to maturity tells you the total return on your investment of all those future coupon payments plus the face value at maturity. So to calculate YTM, we have to know the price of the bond, its face value, the amount of those fixed coupon payments, and we also need to know when the bond matures. And uh, those last ones are written on the bond contract and won't change, but the price of the bond is determined by market forces. So where does the price of the bond come from? Economists are interested in studying why prices are what they are and why they do what they do. So we need a theory for the price of the bond. The price of the bond is understood to be the present value of the sum of all the future expected payments. 
If it's important to remember that a dollar received in the future is not worth as much to me as a dollar today. I'd always prefer those future payments today rather than tomorrow. And why is that the case? Well, if I had that dollar today, I could invest it, I could save it in my savings account or in a CD at my bank, and I could earn interest on it. So by paying me later, you're essentially taking away some of that interest that I could have earned if you had paid me today. Right? Another reason a dollar uh, in the future is not worth the same as a dollar today is inflation. The prices of the things that I buy are rising, so each dollar I get in the future has less and less purchasing power compared to a dollar today. And the bonds payments, the face value and the coupon payments are always going to be the same dollar amount. But those dollars become worth less and less over time. So each additional payment is worth less and less in terms of purchasing power. So we have to discount those future payments to calculate their present value. All right, so here's the formula for yield to maturity of a coupon bond. The cash flow uh, that you see in the numerator are, those are the annual coupon payments. And the last cash flow includes the face value of the bond. And yield in the denominator could theoretically be the expected future short-term interest rates over those periods or inflation rates. And what I want to show here is what happens to the present value of those future payments if yield increases. Those denominators would all be getting bigger if yield increases, which would make the bond price smaller mathematically, and vice versa. So for a concrete example, let's say Eric issues a $1,000 face value bond that will mature in three years, and until then he'll be making a total of $50 coupon payments every year for the purpose of our calculations. And let's say we expect short-term or one-year interest rates, say a one-year CD at my bank, to be 3% for all three years of the life of the bond. Well, what should the bond price be if that's the case? Well, we plug those numbers into our formula, and here you can see I've plugged it in uh, the way you might see it worked in Excel or on a graphing calculator. And the price comes out to be $1,056.57. We say that this bond is selling at a premium because the price is greater than face value, which is typical for a coupon bond. All right, so here we've calculated what the yield would be. Um, Right, and the good news is that uh, yield is going to be constant in our problems. All right, so suppose that uh, Eric is auctioning his bond, and the price is currently $1,080. What is the yield to maturity? All right, so in most cases, we're going to be able to look and see what the bond price is, and we're going to be solving for yield rather than solve for price as we did before. So what would that look like? All right, well, we simply plug it back into our formula with plugging in price, and we solve for yield. And that would be difficult to do without a uh, graphing or without a financial calculator. So uh, typically, that's how it's done. You have a financial calculator, and you plug in the values and solve for yield. All right, using our formula and our financial calculator, we calculate a yield to maturity of 2.21 percent. All right, so a person that's paying $1,080 for this bond is expecting a 2.21 nominal percent return on their loan to Eric. Now, what if immediately after this person buys the bond for $1,080, news comes across Twitter that there's a flash freeze in Florida or some other disaster, and the lemon crop is just devastated. The lemon prices soar, and now Eric's lemonade will be so expensive that it can't compete with the soda machines on campus. Well, people would lose faith in Eric's ability to repay the bond, and it, and it would lose value. If someone buys it now, let's say he would only be willing to pay $800 for it. Well, that person, if Eric is able to repay, would receive a yield of 13.55%. Now, on the contrary, suppose Eric's parents say that they will cover his debts if he can't repay. They're going to backstop the loan. Well, now Eric would be considered a safe bet, and the bond would be valuable again. And let's just say the market value then goes up to $1,100. Well, if somebody bought the bond then, then they would receive a 1.56% return or yield over the life of the bond. All right, so important concepts to remember here that when the price of a bond rises, the yield or the interest rate falls. And when the price of a bond falls, the yield or the interest rate rises. Now, in a money and banking class, I'd point out that when the Federal Reserve announces they want to increase the money supply to stimulate the economy, they do that by buying bonds in the open market. All, right. All else constant, that causes the price of bonds to rise and interest rates to fall. And what that does is it lowers the cost of borrowing for people like Eric and encourages them to issue bonds to borrow to invest in expanding their businesses.
So if the Fed wants to cool down the economy, they do just the opposite. They sell bonds, which causes interest rates to rise and investment to decrease. So that ends this brief primer on bonds. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much for watching.